Messi again. He's left one for the American That's amazing. Lionel Messi. Arsenal legend Arsene Wenger once said that the only way to be a successful footballer is by mastering the 1v1. If you're strong in the one against one, is it defensively or offensively? You are strong in the game. You see all the great uh, players, the common denominator. They can dribble, they can run with the ball. Across the world, there's been a surge in 1v1 football. And it's all because of one group, Top Ballers. Top Ballers has changed the way football is watched through their 1v1 content through social media. They have over 100 million views online and have collaborated with some of the game's biggest creators. So I had to interview them live from London. Purser, Manel, my guy, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, bro, trying the Portuguese there as well. I'm killing it. Credit to you. É um prazer. É um prazer. You smashed okay. that one. Trust me, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to get that Portuguese down pretty soon. <laughs> but it's nice to have you. First question really is just like that everyone really wants to know is how did you start Top Ballers? Yeah, nah, bro, look, listen, first and foremost, you're obviously here in London. Um, I appreciate you coming down, obviously attending our event as well, which I'm sure you guys will see as well. Um, but I think, yeah, just to jump straight into it, bro, I've been involved in football from playing to coaching to so many different avenues. So it's deeper than just the story I'm about to say. Um, but yeah, just involved in football in so many different ways. But to just dive straight into the story, it was essentially, I was sat back playing FIFA, you know, as you do with your boy. I'm there playing my, with my boy. And I just turned to him and I said, you know, I'd smoke you on a 1v1. And he just says, yo, like, what do you mean? And I just thought, you know what? Like, in that lobby, and guys who play FIFA, they, they'll know what I'm talking about. When you're in that lobby and it's the game mode and you're waiting to play against another player and it's you versus the goalkeeper. I remember thinking, imagine it was me and the other team's player versus the goalkeeper. So I went back to the drawing board, started designing out what the format could look like. Um, and then my cousin and my brother, who are obviously heavily involved in football so long as well, presented something to them and we patched it all up and then we create the format of Top Baller, which people obviously see now. Um, we set out to do, the plan was to do, London's obviously divided west, north, east, south. Um, so we said, you know what, we're gonna find the best baller in each one of those areas and then do an all-stars. Whether we get one view, whether we get 50 million views, whatever happens, we're gonna do that. So five events and we're here 17 months later. Wow, only 17 months later. So you started this in 2023? 2023, yeah, yeah. Wow. You guys have already grown over 200K on Instagram. How much, like 200K on YouTube as well? Yeah, like 250 something on YouTube as well. Wow, that's crazy. And what, what piqued like my attention is just like the dedication that y'all have. Like y'all are really like grinding and putting out videos every single week. And it's not just putting out videos, like y'all are like really changing lives by like, you know, giving the kids contracts and getting people notice and shout. So it's really, really cool. No, I appreciate that, man. Honestly, that's one part of, I think, Top Baller, which we probably haven't shown as much. So far, we've helped five different players get into different academies across the UK. Um, and yeah, man, it's, it, it's surreal. Like, it's, I'd be lying to you if I told you it's not, it's almost like a dream, innit? It's like I gotta pinch myself sometimes. It's like I'm doing the thing I love doing the most and I'm changing so many lives while I was doing it. Before this, I was coaching in different academies within Premier League academies, as I mentioned to you. And that was insane. That was surreal doing that as well. It, it was sick and I was always working within football, which is what I wanted to do. But to take that onto social media and obviously do it at a bigger scale, it's just, yeah, man, it's crazy. And like, I mean, yeah, like I was saying, 16, 17 months, it's like we crossed half a billion views the other week, like last week or two weeks ago across everything. So it's sick, man. So we just want to continue to push. As you said about the dedication, I think you've now already seen maybe a little bit more behind the scenes since we're here. But yeah, it's crazy, man. We keep pushing. We just want to get bigger and better for everyone that's been watching us and supporting us. And then how did you even get into football? Was that like you're always your sport growing up? Yeah. Oh, bro, you know, it's like I'm a Londoner through and through. With obviously Portuguese and Angolan heritage, but born and raised here in London. So I consider myself a big London. And you know, here in London, it's football. Yeah. Everything's football, every school. You saw the under 12 kids the other day and it's, 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 it's not a joke. Um, so everything's football focused over here. So I was always playing football from a really young age, played for different academies um, at a younger age, diff lots of different football teams. Carried on playing it into my later teens, playing non-league where you, non-league is essentially like Semi-professional is just below all the professional teams, uh, which is what we call non-league over here. Um, really enjoyed that. And then at about 15, 16 years old, I remember hearing about a specific area of football, which is performance analysis. And 
I love that, done my coaching courses, done my degree, done my masters. And yeah, man, then ended up working for lots of different football teams, coaching lots of different kids. Dang, so you got your bachelor's and your master's and what was the degree? So the degree was in sports coaching and... And you got your master's in that? No, master's is in psychology. Psychology. Wow. But in relation to sport. That's so crazy. How was that? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a graduate in May 2025 yeah. and for my bachelor's, I'm going to pursue my master's in sociology. So it's kind of, it's kind of similar. Yeah. But how was it for you? It was sick. I think for me, at the forefront of anything, I think it's just understanding people. Um, I think even before, like, really knowing it was going into coaching at 15 years old, you know, I was always decent with numbers. I'm not going to exaggerate. Never enjoyed English or many other subjects besides PE and numbers. I like the fact that two plus two is four. Whereas if somebody tells me the sky is blue, what does that mean? I say, I don't care. It's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, I like there being one answer and not 50 different answers. But yeah, with psychology, like I said, it's, it's, it's really just the understanding of people, which is why a big thing while I was doing even my sports coaching degree, whilst coaching different just grassroots teams on the sides, um, what I was doing, I was working as a PE teacher, physical education, you know, in different schools. So I've worked in primary schools, secondary schools. I've worked in PRU, so pupil prevention unit. So it's where kids essentially get expelled through either having just a really tough upbringing background or for maybe going a bit too crazy in school doing whatever they were doing, <laughs> isn't it? Um, so I've worked across a whole range. I probably worked in more than like 30 schools across London, wow. from primary high school to Prus. And for me, it was all about just the more kids that I can understand how you behave. It's like, as a coach, before you get in and you sell your philosophies, I think if you can sell yourself as a person, they're gonna buy into you as a person. Then they'll buy into whatever ideas you have. And as they like saying here, run through a brick wall for you. So that makes total sense. I can understand like the connection of like, how you're like so like understanding of like, the kids and I, and I can understand like how like you're doing well with like your 1v1s is because you understand people and you studied it and like 30 different schools in London alone that is insane nice it, it's always true I guess to break that down some people are like how the hell you do a jump from school to school so it's when you work in agencies so obviously over here you can choose to work for an agency I'm sure just like in America as well when you work in an agency they put you in a school for two months as cover then you're in another school for one month as cover then another school for three weeks and you know if the schools like you then they'll try and offer you like a full-time contract but because I was always studying at the same time as working it was just I always knew that my studies came at the front of everything and I just really enjoyed it I'm the sort of person I would rather travel more and experience different things even if my commute is longer and you know it messes up your routine a little bit more as opposed to just traveling from a to b to a to b i've always liked that which is why as you can imagine now with top baller being able to travel everywhere it's like it's, it's, it's amazing i'm the same way with content i would love i would rather just be everywhere than just being here it's why you're here bro it's why you're here exactly man <laughs> like i'm still in school as well like i'm still doing school online but i was like i had this opportunity and i was like dang like i can connect with top ballers i can i can connect with you guys and go to the NFL games of like sometimes you just got to take that take that that I wouldn't even say risk but just like that that thing I don't know because especially if you have a vision to like get to the top like you do yeah just to pause you on that I'm actually curious right now how did you find because you've obviously come over here you've experienced the whole soccer culture growing up over there in America I experienced it briefly you know top baller videos out in America but you know it better than I do and I took you know my, my whatever I took back and I understand it a little bit better what about NFL now? I'm curious. Based on what you've seen in America and what you saw here with the NFL games, was it basically just all Americans there or did you actually find, I don't know, English people or European people who like are obsessed, love NFL as well? What's yeah. the difference? Nah, it's insane. Like, it was, it was really, it was all British people that I met. Like, I, I, only, I met a couple Americans, but it was a lot of British people. I met a German fan mm -hmm. that said there was over 150 Germans. Like, they all came to go watch the game. And it's just like a regular football game. Like, the only difference is that like everyone's more happy. So like and everyone there's fans of everywhere. You know, if you go to like an Arsenal game, Arsenal and Newcastle game, which I'm actually gonna go to, but you're gonna only gonna see Arsenal fans and Newcastle fans. But if you go to the, the like an NFL game in London, you get fans from everywhere and they're all just so happy, you know. Like every time I was doing an interview, everyone was just so happy and I'm like, dang, like am I in England right now? Like I'm not used to this. But yeah, like it's really growing. Like I really think like the NFL did a really good job and making it like hospital uh making it like great for the fans and great for the for the city and everything so the nfl really has a great like possibility in building something like overseas 
No, I, listen, man, I love that, man. I'm going to be straight with you. The only thing I know of NFL is I played a Madden game like 10 years ago. It was one that like when you hit someone, their leg breaks or something. <laughs> oh, I think it's Backbreaker. It's, it wasn't even Madden. Yeah, it yeah. was Backbreaker. I've, I don't even think I've ever played Madden. I, I, listen, I ain't ever played it. It was too complicated. There's like 50 different tactics. Yeah. Like defense, attack. It's, there's so much going on in the NFL. I've always wanted to understand it a little bit better, but... I never did, and I guess I haven't. <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that game was so sick. But the only thing I know for sure is, and again, shout out to Destroying, and we were speaking about it for many different ways, you know, Donald, my guy, yeah. is uh, it's like, I think he really put NFL more on the map for a lot of people, especially here in the UK, you know, between all of my brethren and everybody that I know, it's almost everyone watches this stuff, like in terms of the 1v1 content. It's like, because I think it's so simple. You don't need to know. It's like one guy is trying to catch the ball. The other guy is trying to stop him from catching it. And there's just so much sick things happening around that. And yeah, it's just sick. So I think he put NFL really on the map for a lot of us. I need to go to a game. Yeah, no, 100%. Anytime you try to go to a game, any place, just let me know. We'll so what there. team should I support is the question. Oh, Baltimore Ravens. Definitely, 100%. I'm not even going to front. I'm not even going to front and say like any other team. If you want a team that like wins consistently, yeah, that is about to get a championship, hopefully, you got to go with the Ravens. Say no more Ravens it is. Let's go. Let's go. We got one. We got one. Think about destroying. Yeah, like is he he's really cool cuz I've always kind of watched him here and there, but then like I I remember I was in it was my sophomore year in college and I was I was obviously I was doing work, but you know you kind of put a YouTube video in the in the side. So like I saw one of his 1v1 videos and I was like, dang. And like, I always like, as obviously I'm like an editor content creator, so I always try to see what he's doing. And like the editing is just always just so smooth and it's entertaining, even with the music, how it fades out and cuts in. And like you said, like I didn't realize it, it's very, very simple. It's just somebody try to catch it and someone try to stop him from catch it. And that's exactly what you guys do. You guys make it really simple. And then you guys, I like, I like y'all because y'all add like a, a little like personal like perspective to it by like, you know, interviewing the people before and then like you guess the people like hyped about it and stuff like that. So it's really no, cool. no, I really appreciate it. We always said that like when we started Top Baller, the players are at the forefront of everything we do as opposed to just us being the face. You know, here is this guy who like just wants to be the face of this thing. It's like, you know, we obviously react to different moments and whatnot. And some people love it. Some people hate it. Listen, God knows. And I don't know. And I just watch it and I appreciate it. you don't watch it. I still appreciate you. So it's like, um, yeah, man, that's what we did. And it's, I think for me, it's all about, it's like, how can I make this entertaining for somebody who just likes football? Because anyone who loves football is like, they're going to want to watch as many football things as possible. But it's just like, how can you engage those people who kind of just like football? And by simply, it's just like, anyone who sat back watching it, it's just like, even, even my missus, my girlfriend, it's like, she don't care about football too much. When she's watching something like that, she knows exactly what it is is there's this one guy and he has to protect this like let the ball from going into this net and this other guy has to like kick it to go in there literally as simple as that isn't it and it makes it a bit more entertaining because you know what you're watching um and i guess that's what the nfl done for me because but i must say the nfl is a lot more complicated i think than football and Thank it's not you. through right or bad but it's, i think just the amount of tactics and like just it's it's crazy it's sick i'll genuinely just as a sports fanatic almost like I love so many sports basketball I played so long and rugby obviously here is a big one as well and so many tennis but NFL is just one that I actually said to my friend the other day I would have loved if they had done American football in schools because yeah. I think that would have been so sick but there's no like there's no one really that I know I think there was one guy that played American football I knew but that's it yeah no nah, you would have you would have killed it I feel like you, my you guy. especially <laughs> since you're center mid I feel like you'd be a good quarterback I feel like you could you could toss the rock a little bit. Um, I I listen them tactics in it the tactical. <laughs> oh yeah yeah the tactics are a little that's tough, but yeah no that's very true. It's all about like simplifying like simplifying the the video so that really everyone can watch it. Yeah. And someone like like the top ballers vids like I can show my mom that I can show my grandmother that I can yeah. show my five year old son that and they will all they all like it. I hope you are showing them in it. Tell them <laughs> press like and comment as well. One hundred percent nah I'm all about Man. that yeah that's great. But you're talking about the destroying thing so like. When that happened, that collab happened, I thought y'all were like, been doing it for years. I was like, okay, that makes sense. But y'all just started. So like, how did y'all get that connection with him? First of all, you know what's mad? I haven't even told him. And I swear I've been meaning to show him for a while. I had after like, cause I told you the whole stop, the story about Top Baller, you know, doing it with FIFA. Um, and then obviously after playing FIFA, I get to a point where obviously I start showing some of my friends what we're going to be doing. And one of my friends had mentioned, oh, there's this guy D. Strain that does these 1v1s NFL. So he really brought alive the idea of how to capture it. I always said credit to him. He's the GOAT of 1v1 in general, of any sports, anything anyone's doing. I've got to give him that. Um, obviously, we started a whole crazy scene 
in football, which is sick and surreal. Um, but I guess to dive into your what was your question again, bro? Shit, I forgot. <laughs> How did the destroying like connection? The work? collab. Sorry, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was thinking, why am I talking about this guy so much? <laughs> but um, I'd actually written out. I remember a letter, a DM that I was gonna send him after our like sixth or seventh episode because I was meant to send him and be like, "Yo, man, look, listen, you basically inspired us to do this. Like, I respect you so much. Like, and I really appreciate you." But I never ended up sending it. But I still got it there on my notes somewhere, and it's still got the date. But yeah, so how that came about was um, he hit us up on the DM on Instagram. So he like liked a, a, a bit of our content. He liked some of our content. I think he even dropped a comment. Then he just hit us up on the DM and said, yo, I'd love to talk. I said, cool, like, let, let, let's make it happen. Like, let's see. And we jumped on a call with him and he basically said that I know his story, which is sick already in NFL and the way he overcame everything. But he's obviously from Costa Rica. He grew up playing football and whatnot. Um, so soccer, soccer. <laughs> soccer was obviously a big part of his life. So he had said that he had looked to try and do ways of how to do a 1v1 within soccer football. And, but he was obviously so dedicated in American football, he just couldn't quite figure out. So he was like, when he saw us doing it, it was like, it inspired him. And I was like, this is crazy. The man who inspired me is now saying I inspired him. Do you get me? So he just said, look, I'm coming to London. Let's do a big event. I want to drop like 10, 15 racks on someone who wins. And I said, yo, big man, especially at that time, I was like, we were giving out a thousand pounds, which, which, which we're basically still giving now. And, um, it ended up being a £5,000 tournament and it was just sick, man. For anyone who hasn't seen the video, it was, it was one of my favourite videos. It was just, the energy was just sick throughout the whole video. It's crazy how, yeah, the, the, the student inspires the master and then vice versa. But I would even say that too, because you guys are really contemporaries now. So, yeah, that's, that's really great. No, I appreciate it, man. It's sick, man. We want to continue to go. Every now and again we talk. We had something planned which we were going to do, which is crazy which was basically flying out the best 16 players from America and the best 16 players from UK to compete for like a massive prize. And it's something we've been talking about for a while, but I know he obviously, is it UFX? What's it called? The league uh, that he's in. Oh, um, I know it. Oh, the XFL. XFL, yeah. that's a UFS. I was thinking UFC or something, <laughs> but I know he joined that as well. So all the yeah. best to him. I don't know if he's still doing that or not, but yeah. whatever he's doing, I'm sure he's killing it. So yeah. I'm sure we'll come back around to that soon anyway. So, and yeah, we'll make it happen. Yeah. Speaking of America, how was the American tour? that y'all did wavy wavy america is great listen america is great <laughs> you can't deny it it's like you lots are just crazy because you lots are just like so many countries in this one big plot of land that's basically what you lots are i understand like honestly even through speaking to some americans that like had never left america and i would think bro like what, like what are they talking about i remember making some friends on like playstation you know online gaming yeah like through like call of duty and stuff and i was like 18 19 and during uni days I like, met American guys from all over, like all over, and they were like, oh no, nah, we ain't never left. Like we've never left. And I'd be like, how do you not leave? Like, but I understand why you guys don't leave. You got everything. Obviously we done Miami. We were there for about two, three weeks. We done Miami, Charlotte, and New York, and every single one felt like its own country. Like it was crazy. But yeah, it was sick, man. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like everything you said about America is 100% true. And like I've been to a couple countries now. I've been to like Nigeria, been to England, France, Spain, that kind of that kind of place. Portugal a little bit too. But like the thing that separates like America from the other places is really just like the opportunity. Like literally, I'm telling you, and I'm not even trying to be like biased, but like anything that you want to do, like you're able to do it there, and it's just like on a bigger scale. So, would you ever see yourself like living in America? A hundred percent. I came back from not Miami. Miami's amazing. Miami's so great, but. I probably wouldn't live in Miami. I, I don't think I could say I, I see myself living in Miami. I love London for so many reasons, but as you know, I've also spoken to you and like Portugal, Lisbon, so close to home, you know, being Portuguese and Golan, spent time in both countries, but Lisbon is around the corner from here. So I spend a lot of time there. But with America, yeah, uh, I love New York. Um, there's this like a bit of arrogance probably to it, you know, growing up in London, people are like, London's the pinnacle of the world. London is, London is the place. And even growing up, I'd be like, what's New York? Like London's the spot. I went to New York and I said, wow, this is crazy. I think just like you said as well, I think it's the opportunity as well, but I think it's just the way people are. I, I, I just thought maybe it was cause I was English, you know, with English accent, maybe, maybe it's different. Some people say the same about London and don't like New York. I've had friends and, but, I loved it, man. I just don't think people were as judgmental. So like when you're going into meetings with so many different clients or brands and stuff, you can just be more you, dress more what you want. Whereas over here, is, I think it's a little bit more pretentious. Um, but yeah, I love the whole experience. I made like so many connects that just helped me on a personal level as well as my brand top baller as well. Um, so yeah, I think New York, I, I turned around and I said to my missus, I said, yeah, like I, I would love to live here for like at least three, four months. 
at some point in my life. So soon, New York. Yeah, I, I can definitely see you in America. Like yeah. you have that American aura. So <laughs> I can see you like yeah. having fun and really just just taking over New York or taking over anywhere you stay. So. No, I love them, man. Again, like the football community over there was so sick. Like we met so many different content creators. I'll name them, but there's so many different names. That I don't want to forget someone in there because I'm, I'm so cool with so many of these guys now, in it? So, but it was just so sick. It was just so welcoming. And, you know, football, soccer is just continuing to grow out there. And I really look at the World Cup as like that tip of the iceberg, man, because I think it's, it's the effects that's going to happen after the World Cup. Obviously, all eyes from us as a brand to so many other big brands and whatnot, all looking at America, you know, wanting to do something there in Canada and Mexico, to be fair. Um, and I understand why they want to, because everything's bigger and better in America. And that's definitely no secret. But I think what's going to happen after that World Cup is going to be insane. That's what also I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get to that, 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 that stage, especially during 2026, especially with like the football content because like it's going to be insane then and especially that we have like two years to like grind and work there like and they're playing in houston where i'm from so man the content is going to be insane no no it's going to be sick man I, honestly i can't wait for it obviously we done that trip over to america um we had planned miami obviously we've done a massive activation with adidas over there um as well as copper 90 streets fc shout out everyone that helped me that made it happen and I always knew I wanted to do New York. I, I knew like on our statistics how much love we get from New York. So I said, cool, we're doing Miami and New York. And it just so happened, you know, Isaiah Reed, shout out Isaiah Reed, my guy over there who also put me in contact with you as well. Um, Isaiah Reed was showing us love and he said, you know what, listen, I'm a Charlotte boy. If you go to Charlotte, like for those that don't know, first of all, Isaiah Reed, he plays for our MLS team, Houston, Texas, I yeah. believe, but he's from Charlotte. Um, and he said, look, listen, if you want to come Texas or you want to do Charlotte, whichever one you want to do, I think it would be sick because I told him that we were just going to have a couple of days, just lay over, not really doing much. So essentially put me in contact with you. Texas didn't quite come through this time, but not yet, not yet, not yet. But we ended up doing Charlotte and I was sick. I love that episode. Charlotte was sick as well. You know, I've got to ask you because I asked some people there and I can't remember too much. Is Charlotte country? Is Charlotte considered like country in America? Nah, not Is it even, not, not um, even close. Nah, where's country in America? Con oh, what's oh country? country. Okay, I think you meant like a country. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, but I'm, I'm not one of them. Listen, I'm not one of <laughs> them. I promise. Sure. But nah, Charlotte. Nah, it's not really country. Like the city. Nah, I'll probably say like, man, it's tough. Like any city, you won't really say it's country. But like in the state, they'll, they'll be like country, like you know, farms, that type of stuff. Like in Texas, we got that like everywhere. So. I mean the y'all. <laughs> y'all, it's those people like y'all. Yeah, hey, what y'all doing around here? Yeah, like, yeah. that's Texas. Yeah, yeah that's Texas. it's really like the South, even like because I used to. So I was born in in Houston, grew up there till I was five, and then I moved to Maryland for like primary school, and then I moved back to Houston. But like when I moved back to Houston, like everyone was saying y'all, and like I didn't even know. I was like, what's going on? Like because I always saw it through TV shows. I didn't know people actually like spoke like that. And then now I just say y'all all the time now. So. To be fair, there's someone out in Atlanta every time I speak to them as well. So it's y'all, it's, it's, it's sick. I like, listen, y'all is so much better than all of you or just something. It's like, it's a cool world, man. It's, yeah. it's, cool, it's a cool word. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. The linguist, the linguist stuff in, in America and UK is just always fascinating. You know what, it's funny. I remember it was like Kevin Hart and I think it was Big Shaq or whatever that they were doing word for word, like the slang words you guys use. Do you guys know what we call it? You know when you grab a water bottle and like you drink it without drinking? Like without oh touching your goodness. lips on it. I always have like these debates with my cousins all the time because they're they're British. So, but we call it waterfall. I know and then you. Y'all say, oh, let me sky it. Yeah, I mean, like, sky. Do you know what? I'm gonna agree with you, lads. Right now, I was talking to my guy about it the other day. Waterfall makes more sense. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. a waterfall. You it's heard it from a British man, man. But sky, sky is just easier to say. It's like let me sky that. Yeah, it's yeah, easier that is to say true. let me waterfall that. It's yeah. just like. Imagine you're just out playing football and someone just said, let me waterfall that. It's like, what? Like, yeah, they'd be like, what? Yeah, 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 they would be confused, yeah. <laughs> you're talking about that, but yeah, nah, it's funny. There's so many different ones. Yeah, and that's how I always had to get used to that, like, every time I'm go over here. And then also, I always feel like I'm losing my hearing because, like, like, how y'all pronounce certain words and how y'all talk, I'm like, bro, you have to say that again. I don't know. <laughs> also, one thing I wanted to ask about top ballers, like, how did you, like, assemble your team? Because, like, I met all of them a couple of days ago in, in your event, and all of them are just like high quality dudes. And it's hard to find that, especially in like the content creating space. Like you always get all those like guys that try to little bro you, but you guys, you saw, you developed like and assembled a real like Avengers team. So how did that start? No, nah, I appreciate it. Listen, I think first and foremost, it's just a common goal. I think we're just all who we are on the back of where the top ball is turning out 
10,000 views a month or 10 million views a month is we're just who we are and that is the board and our top baller is it's as authentic as you can get so meeting me now or meeting me on an event or meeting me wherever it is it's just I'm always going to be who I am and I think brands respect that to be fair as well as, as well as all do you get me everyone who follows us as well and shows us love but you know essentially like the main host that's my cousin um, yeah, I didn't. I just realized that y'all are related. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philip, Philip's my cousin. Um, obviously, I do more of like the referee and slash hosting on the day. Um, of not on the event that you saw. That was a bit of a different event. But the past thirty odd videos, I do like the refereeing slash hosting. My cousin Philip does like the main hosting. My brother's more like scorekeeper slash host. Um, and then yeah, when you say you met the whole team, you know it's it's not fair to everyone else behind the scenes. Um, you met obviously Philip, Francisco, and then you met Owaz as well. Um, but there's seven of us. Essentially, Top Baller is a seven man team. There's the three guys who you mainly see on camera, which is me, my brother, and my cousin. But then there's everyone else behind the scenes. And I guess to list through them is one of them's my sister, who is essentially the project manager, which is what she was doing and she's always done. Do you get me in so many different roles and always excelled at? The other one's my cousin, who he's worked and owned so many different businesses throughout his life. So he's the partnerships manager. The other one is, you met him always, was the guy who's there as well on the day as well. And he's the accountant and he works for some of the biggest accounting firms in the world. So it made sense as well. And then another one's my brother-in-law. So, and he's our brand manager. So it's, it's a proper in-depth team, which is why, especially in the beginning when a lot of my friends or a lot of audience members would be like, oh, you know, it's sick. Like you just turn up, like pull out a camera and like lay out some cones and play and like let the ball roll. I'm thinking, it's a bit more complicated than just that. But at the same time, I love that because it goes back to what we were saying in the beginning. It's about simple and that is all Top Baller is. You get out a ball, you get out cones, and which is why you see now there's so many other pages all around the world now. There's, far, there's hundreds and hundreds of pages now all doing like the same Top Baller, um, essentially like 1v1 rules, which is amazing to see and we absolutely love it, man. Yeah, no, that's great. Like, yeah, you just got, basically you just got the best of the best like from every single part of your, like you got from the business side and then from like the content side and then the on camera side. That's really good. Cause like when I walked out of the meeting, cause like for me right now, I do like everything, like the editing video, like, like accounting, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as I walked out, I was like, yeah, I got to make a team because it just makes it a lot easier. Like I would love to like, just kind of focus on like one thing and then you just have everyone else and just trust them. So it's, it's, it was really, really motivating. That's really important. Obviously, I'm not going to just sit here. It's, you know, they say the whole thing about don't get into business with your family. Yeah. Obviously, I quite clearly and we all disagree with that. But that doesn't mean it's always perfect sailing. Like there's so many different things that always go on that sometimes you're like, oh, my God, it's family. And then other times it's like it's the most amazing thing that it's your family because you can just be raw and honest. And for anybody that knows and we've received so many comments like there's a lot of Portuguese talking going on in the background of these videos. And that's probably a my brother turning to me and saying some nasty stuff to me in Portuguese or me saying it to him or me saying it to my cousin because we can just be brutally honest with each other throughout an event and if something's not going right, it's like, as opposed to, I don't know, maybe working with people who you don't know, you're not familiar with, if you react in certain ways, you've got to be more cautious, but, you know, the event is D-Day and you've got to make it right. So sometimes, you know, emotions get a bit heightened and we always leave that. It's like, everything's left. It's like, we all want the best for the same thing. Nobody is here to hurt nobody's feelings, but... I respect them, man. I, I really respect the grind. You do everything so far. I think there's pros and cons to doing both, bro. So if it's working for you, why not? If not, if you find the right person, then why not, man? It can just multiply everything. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, and then that, when you guys said like you guys did it and like basically started like a year and a half ago, I was like, wow, okay, because you guys have a team together and you guys are all growing together, all have the same mindsets. And that's really how you grow, really. Because if you can have like like-minded people together, you're already going to be at the top and that's why y'all are y'all are at the top no no i appreciate it so much man and it's bro it's, it's so sick and humbling of course to be able to work with my family members you get me basically all the time in it so it's there's pros and cons to it but overall yes it's been a sick experience so far we keep enjoying it man and we want to keep pushing it. i appreciate you so much saying we're at the top there but for us it's like like you said it's just 17 months in it's been so much success so early in and we just want to maintain that and not just maintain it, even times that by 10. And just, so we've got so many ideas and so many different things to just incorporate better for the same people that have been showing us love from the beginning. So like in terms of that too, like where do you see top ballers in the future? 
there's this like funny saying and I know they're going to cuss me to it but it's like Manel would do 1v1s on the moon if he could but it's just I feel like 1v1s is such a big part of the game and like Arsene Wenger had said as well Arsene Wenger shout out Maguna through and through but it's like Arsene Wenger had said that it's like you know every player should learn how to master a 1v1 situation whether it's playing or whether it's defending so I love it I just think it's so sick for the players as well sorry that was a side note one that just came to my head but yeah. I mean in terms of why I see top ballers we just want to and we will do 1v1s in as many countries around the world as possible and continue to do them and do the biggest events possible with a massive one being that we want to do a 1v1 World Cup, um, which would be, now it's 34 countries or 36 countries in the World Cup, it used to be 32 or something. However many countries they decide it is, um, we want to get a player from each one of those countries to come and compete and do a massive, massive World Cup. And we might just do that one for 2026 Miami, keep an eye out because we've got some big plans. No, that, yeah, y'all should definitely do it. And y'all y'all definitely do it whenever y'all decide to do it. But that would be that would be insane. And the thing is, like, it's like what I love about it is like y'all aren't just doing it. Like it, that that event right there will like bring a lot of attention for these people that are trying to get on the teams and, and on these clubs. So it's really, really cool. Like I was just talking with my uncle actually yesterday about um, I was like, yeah, like I, I really want to make content in Nigeria, really. Just kind of like what you do, like just to like, you know, help out the people. And I was like, yeah, and he was saying like, yeah, like he has like a club, like the, him and his, uh, and my other uncle, they had a club in Nigeria and like, they were able to like get people like to, you know, get signed and, you know, just bring exposure. Cause there's so many players that are just like undercover, you know, you don't really see them. They're better than maybe like some of these pros that you see today, but they just don't have the resources. No, hundred percent. I think you probably witnessed firsthand like the under 12s events that you saw just the other day that we done obviously in collaboration with SV2, shout out SV2. Um, like the boy who we ended up saying, you know, was if obviously the winner won and credit to him. But in terms of the most technical player there, who's just who was basically wild everyone, every play, you know, Idris, the little the little left footed boy from Somalia, absolute baller. It's like he's not even playing in a pro academy yet. And it's just like, why is he not? So I guess that's already one area. And I think I showed you already. It's like we're already on top of that, like trying to help him out to get uh, some sort of trial or to just take it to the next level. So and even more so. In the, in, in the sort of country that you just were speaking about right there with Nigeria. Like I told you, it's, um, I think I'd mentioned anyway, like going to Africa is a massive, massive thing for us. We've been trying for a while and it's just a little bit tougher to execute for so many reasons in terms of what brands want to go out there, want to send you out there and, and, and so many other unfortunately bureaucratic reasons I guess you could say but you know our, my mom's from Angola I was about to say our oh, mom because I speak on behalf of me and the other two guys because this is all of ours in it you just see me here now but um, yeah our moms are from Angola and we've been to Angola a couple times as well and it's just it's just amazing man and even the street football you see out of Angola one of the biggest pages is called Pelatade P-E-L-A dot T-A-D-E if you guys want to see genuinely some of the craziest skills coming out of Africa, go and check out that page. There are guys, they're based out in Luanda, Angola. And yeah, man, we're going to make it happen. It's probably part of like the hindering block over there has always been that when we first went into Europe, I guess, because obviously being here in the UK is we done Lisbon because, you know, I'm half Portuguese, half Angolan. So everyone said, oh, go Paris, go France, because there's so many ballers and there are Paris is home of so many ballers but we always said nah we want to go to where we're from innit so we went Lisbon and you see it on our YouTube as well and that Lisbon episode was sick and we just want to do the same thing for Africa so when we go Africa you know you could go somewhere like Ghana or Nigeria who are more developed right now than, than Angola of course but we really want to make Angola happen first because there's, there's nostalgia behind it as you can imagine so soon and I can't wait I can't wait it's going to be a sick episode yeah you are really going global and I can't wait to see that and especially that Angola trip if y'all need help or anything, if y'all need another uh, creator there, I'll be there. I right, buck us there, bro. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. But yeah, no, honestly, even with that as well, hopefully we're hoping to make Angola happen first, but there's a lot of difficulties behind it. So there's one or two other countries which we should hopefully be announcing something in the next. I don't know when you plan for this come out, but we should be announcing something hopefully around December or January where it'll be top bullet will be in Africa for the first time. And that is going to be sick, man. That's insane, man. If y'all need help, I'm just saying, I'm there. My but guy. That's great, man. I can't wait. But we got to be quiet, though. I can't, I can't let the people know about it yet. It's coming <laughs> yeah, out December. Yeah, bro, it's going to be sick. Yeah. So, I know you, you said you played football. Do you watch football? 
bro, I'm, uh, I love it, man. Football is like, I say it's like there's people who like something, there's people who love something, then there's something else, which is people who are obsessed by something. Football is my obsession. It's like football is my everything. Like I am, I think everything I am because of football as well, in terms of, I think just all the experience that it gave me from playing to obviously coaching and now being in the social media aspect of it, do you get me, from a content creator perspective or football as well. So, yeah, man, I, I don't play as much as I used to play, uh, and that's terrible. I still showed out when I went to America, though. If you ain't seen the videos, I was not making guys like crazy. You should link that. I'm going to send you this. You link that. But, um, yeah, no, I still I, I try and play as much as I can. But, you know, as you get older as well, it's, there's so many different things I like doing from, like, MMA to, like, tennis, so many other sports that... But growing up, my whole life was football, and, yeah, I'm a... Arsenal fan through and through. I watch every single game. Say less. I'm a every Gunners fan game. as well. Bro, I've got to spud you just for that, my Come brother. On Come on. Yeah, yeah, man. I heard you referencing you're going to go Arsenal, Newcastle, and I said, that's my guy. Yeah. I haven't been to an Arsenal game this season yet, bro. It's just, the schedule has just been hectic as well. It's just been tough, but soon and, man, fingers crossed they win the league, man. But I don't know, my city always just seem to win it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Nah. They always do. I, like some last year was actually painful. Like I, that was the one year really Arsenal should have won the league, and somehow Man City won it. And like was it four years in a row, and they just been killing it. I don't know, man. But even speaking of Manchester, uh, did you hear about uh, Ten Hag? They got they sacked him like sacked. today. Yeah, I was. Oh, I mean, I think it's upsetting for every fan that isn't a Manchester United fan because I think every other fan was like, "Nah, let him stay, man. Give him five years contract renewal." I don't ever like talking bad on coaches, innit? I, I coach myself and I always love that, but it's deep from him personally, but I think it's the best thing for Manchester United. They're a, obviously, if not the biggest club in, the U, in England, I don't know who is, but they're a sick team, just not right now. So I just, I, I personally kind of like it. Like, I want the biggest teams to all be at their strongest so that everyone compete. Maybe let Arsenal win the league like two or three times and then let that happen. Thanks. But I just like the Premier League being the strongest league out there. So for as good as it is seeing and, you know, slapping up Manchester United every time we play them, it's, you want to see everyone doing their best. Yeah. I believe they're 14th in the table right now. Do you think they'll ever get relegated this year? Hopefully. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Do you know what? I'm, I don't even know, but no, nah, no, nah, I, I highly doubt they're going to get relegated. I highly doubt they're going to. they got a sick team. I know they've had a lot of injuries like Arsenal right now, so. And that's another one. Do you know what? This is just a wide one. This is just another. To add on to what you said as well, is I think it's with players and with injuries as well. If you look at the amount of games players were playing like 10, 15 years ago and what they're playing now, it's like it's a lot more games, especially if you're a better player and you get further in bigger teams, respectfully. Um, I think the amount of games, the demand, the intensity of the game now, the speed of the game now is completely different. And I think a lot of fans get so upset when players get injured, just like me, you know, Odegaard, Arsenal's captain, got injured playing for Norway, and which is another aspect. There shouldn't be as many friendlies, but just the amount of games the top level player has to play is ridiculous. And I'm all for quality over quantity. I would prefer to see those games getting reduced and see my team have the chance to be at their best for 45, 50 games a season than just see my team playing 80 games knowing that a lot of players are going to be getting injured throughout and no team's really at their best. So I'm definitely a big advocate for that. Do you ever think the Premier League will cut down games? Never. Just more and more and more. They love it. It's, it's what brings in the budget, so I can't blame them. That's so interesting because that's the same thing for the NBA. I don't know if you watch it, but like, they play so many games, like, and it's not just like the season, but like they play so many games like to start like when they're young. So like they're playing like club basketball until they're like six years old, and it's like you know three four games like like a day, and then they just keep going. And then now when they get to the NBA, like they have 82 games, but most if you, no one really plays 82 games now. It's like 60, 70. And How so, long is each quarter in basketball again? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah, but it's Jeez. a lot of stoppage and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, that. a lot of stuff. But I know, but the intensity and it's a smaller ground. Nah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. No, NBA is a bit different. I think NBA is a, bit, a lot more watched anyway than the NFL within my groups anyway. And I loved it. I was a Cleveland Cavaliers fan because I, I seeing LeBron James. I was like, that's my guy. Yeah. And then I never switched because I wasn't really fan fan. You know, it's a bit different. I just enjoyed from the outside. And I remember seeing Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose is what true is who truly made me like fall in love with basketball. That I'd like watch his games. I have Chicago Bulls, no. That yeah. was before you got injured. Yeah. I would watch. I remember it was like for two straight seasons. I probably watched like half of. So whatever half is 40 games. I probably watched that, man. Like I loved it. I remember watching them and it was just like, it was sick, man. It was so sick seeing it. I don't know what happened, why it died out, but it died out. And it was upsetting to see. I know he got a lot of injuries as well and stuff. I think he's retired now. Yeah, he just retired, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's that was, how you that was my in, guy. That's how you fell in love with the NBA then. LeBron James really like, show, it's a funny story actually. I saw LeBron James, funnily enough. My brother what? knows. 
So this was when I was like eight, no, not eight, like 10 years old. We were in Nike Town, me, my brother and my dad. Nike Town is, is basically a store in, in central London. Everyone calls it Nike Town. Um, and LeBron James came in and at the time, I didn't really know that much about basketball. I knew certain big players' faces from LeBron to Kobe to I think Pau Gasol, the Spanish guy, because he was always the European guy making waves or something, innit? So I know everyone in Europe would always back him. And uh, yeah, LeBron James comes out, honestly, bro, like we're there, we're buying like some football trainers for my brother in central London. And uh, bro, the store goes from zero to a million so quick my dad's like what's happening they close the doors they lock off the doors and in night time they have this bit where like you walk into the middle and you can design your trainers this was like a long time ago I used to have that I don't know why Nike stopped Nike why did you stop but um and you could create your trainer so he walked into this bit and they locked off everything and I like stood on top of the sofa like where people sit down so top, and I looked and I was like to my brother that's LeBron fucking James like what the fuck is crazy ask him honestly bro it's crazy we were like what the hell then they let everyone out like bit by bit by bit and it, it was crazy but yeah a couple of years later I ended up seeing him Cleveland Cavaliers just thought yeah he was the guy I like the story as well because it was I don't know if he's a Cleveland boy but I know there's a, a big yeah, oh yeah he is yeah so there's a big association obviously with him and Cleveland and it was him always wanting to win the title for them and I know he never in his first spell but then he went back and he won it um I actually didn't watch that season I probably should have but yeah it was like three four years that I was a hard NBA fan and now I just enjoy highlights from afar and it's easy to look at someone. I think it's Kyrie Irving. Yeah. The handles. Oh my lord. I yeah. watch highlights. I watch a lot of highlights. Yeah, he's like the Neymar of the NBA for yeah, sure. Yeah, ba basically, and he is. What a bad boy. I respect it. That's that's crazy that you saw LeBron. Oh my. Was that in 2012 or when was this? Oh, bro, I think it was before. I, I'm nine, ten years old. I don't even know. I remember we wanted to get a picture with him, like, but there was no chance. I don't see, people might even think I'm, I'm lying. I swear to God, there must be some video of him whenever this was. To be fair, I'm sure he's been in London Nighttime probably loads of times, but yeah. there must be some sort of video of him or something. But listen, my brother and my dad knows, because even my dad from then, he's never really watched sports. Even from then, now, if anybody ever says anything about LeBron James or, or anything about basketball to my dad, my dad's like, oh, why? I saw LeBron James. I saw LeBron James. And this is a man who don't know nothing about sport and he don't really like it. So yeah, it's funny. Oh, that's crazy. I'm going to find that clip. Don't worry. I'm going to find it. Bro, find it and clip it onto this, please. These guys are going to think I'm lying right now. <laughs> I'm going to sound like LeBron in it because I know what he does. He's capping on, on it on his podcast. That's all I'm hearing. I'm going to sound like him right now. So, shit. No, that's crazy. You know ball, man. That's crazy. Okay. Do you have a favorite player in the Premier League? Saka. Saka. Immediately. Bro, that's my boy. That's, that's, my, that's my guy. And any Arsenal fan should feel the same way. I think everything we've gone through, and knowing that we've got the best academy player that we've ever had come through. He's a through and through Arsenal guy. He, he seems like the most genuine, lovely. Of course, not that people really care what athletes are like outside, but it's just so nice to see someone. He's, he just looks like the most humble guy ever. Um, and I've worked with, and you know, I've mentioned so many different names that I was saying to you, big, big superstar players. And I'm just upset I've never worked with Saka. It's probably the only time that I would genuinely be like, rah. That's Saka. Not even to Ronaldo and I'm Portuguese. If it was Ronaldo, it's like amazing. But Saka at the end of the day, is, I've grown up an Arsenal fan my whole life. My dream was always, oh my God, play for Arsenal Academy, captain Arsenal Academy like I would do for my school teams or local teams. Then like go and captain my team. And he's literally living that dream and he looks like he's the nicest guy ever living it. So it's like, how can I not back him? Mm, yeah, no, nah, he's, he's literally like, yeah, he's 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 a, what does they call him? The star boy? Star boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's 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 legit. I like him too. But what about you? Favorite Premier League player? Ooh. It's kind of tough because I hate it cuz like my football knowledge is like it's not updated. It's like yeah. in the 2018-2019 realm. So like all time like I'll probably say like people th people joke about it, but I'll probably say like Jesse Lingard just because like I really like his celebrations. I like his like bravado and all that. I really liked him when he played for Man U. Him and Pogba, like, you know, like... He's so like what an that. American guy would like, though, you know, about yeah. football, it comes with the celebrations, with the dancing, because yeah. he was doing stuff not many people, and I hated it so much, and it pained me. Yeah. Man was moonwalking on the Emirates pitch. I can't believe that. That touched my soul. I was saying so many mean stuff to him at that point. I swear to God, through my TV, but... I respect it. Looking back at it, obviously, bro, you respect, even after the game, it's like, bro, you respect it. He banged in a, a sick goal or a goal to win them the game and he's dancing at his rival stadiums. Yeah. What more could you want? But I feel like that's a lot more accepted within like the American community. I even look at the way that like NBA players come in dressed to like the NBA games. I love it, bro. Show out. 
they are showing out. I think I saw LeBron for his son's game, for Bronny's game or something. Yeah. The way he came in, oh my day, bro, clip it. You need to clip them because you're just like a bad man. Yeah. And uh, but in in like it's, it's not really like that here. If anything, it's quite the opposite. Like there's a lot of rules. I don't know if you know where it's just like within certain teams you can only wear a specific color. Where during like Manchester United, for instance, when you're a Manchester United academy, I think they've scrapped it now. But you could only come in wearing black boots. In like in Barcelona, you can only come in. You, you're not allowed to drive like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, which is why Ibrahimovic had so many problems while he was there because he wanted to drive his Lamborghini. So it's like I think the European mindset is a bit different. Like, and I respect them, bro. I love the American mindset in terms of that aspect, anyway. Yeah, no. I remember David Beckham had like problems with Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah. like, because you know he's swaggy and stuff like that too. But like he wasn't able to do that type of things. Made him shave off his head, bro. Yeah, that Made was him insane. Shave off his head. Uh, yeah. And then he rocked that look though. So big up Bex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. I think in in the Euro in Europe in general, really, like, it's a lot of like older customs. So like, yeah. and they respect it. Same thing with it's same thing with America, but like there's, they really started to change it like the last twenty years, and it's starting to become like more modernized. Mo modernized. So I'm curious if you had to rank it, what would you rank this sports in America in terms of popularity? Is it definitely NBA or NFL? Ooh, um, I would probably go. It's so tough. I'll probably go NBA. Like but it's not by clear. You wouldn't say not, it's by like clear. No, it's not clear. Not clear. Okay. It's, it's kind of like one A, one B. NBA, so it's NBA or NFL. But then there's NHL. Yeah, uh, that's, that's like, definitely third. You'd say then. I wouldn't say that was third. I probably, oh. I think now it might be uh, football third, and then oh soccer, yeah, yeah and then yeah, NHL yeah, sorry, four, soccer. yeah, and then baseball. Right. Baseball used to be like the number one. Oh yeah, baseball. Sport. Yeah, but that thing died down. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I don't really mess with baseball that much unless it's like a big game. But it's mainly in specific states. Then I'm guessing that like baseball or thing. Because I know in Charlotte. I remember I was looking around, I was like, oh, this is a football stadium. They were like, nah, this is the baseball team stadium. I don't know what they're called. I don't know if you maybe know. But yeah, it was the, it was the baseball guy stadium I was looking for. Then we ended up finding it. I know Charlotte soccer team out there is like the Lions or something. Yeah. There's something like that. So, but yeah, no, I was always curious to know. I figured it would be NBA or, or, or NFL, but I didn't know it was that close. Yeah. I actually thought maybe it would be NBA it would be a lot higher. I saw when I was in New York, is it Madison Square Garden? Yeah. Is that possible? If yeah, I'm not tripping. MSG, yeah. They just do so many bo boxing fights there that people get confused. Yeah, because who were they? New York Knicks? Is it? Yeah. New York Knicks. Shit, look, I know more than I even thought. That I, I thought I was just making up stuff over here, bro. It looks like I'm getting it right. Nah, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, like we like walked past that. I really wanted to go and watch a game while we were out there, but I don't. There was nothing. There yeah, was July. Nothing nah, there's no games there. There was not. I, I checked in Miami. I checked in obviously Charlotte and in New York. I was looking for anything, man. I wanted to see just. Anything other than football, then I've been to so many different football games, which is sick. But yeah, now unfortunately nothing was on. So next time, next time round, we're gonna go and watch the Ravens. We'll go crazy yes. with it. But yeah, be sick. Yeah. And speaking of other sports, like, have do you have any like aspirations to take on any other sports? Like, do we see like a top ballers basketball edition or a top ballers boxing edition or? No, 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 bro. It's tough. I think in basketball, like the one view on scene has always been quite prominent, and I think what it relates is that like. I think it's just, you know, football over here in UK, without being arrogant with it, I think it's regarded as like the home of football anyway. They say the English invented it, whether they did or did not anyway. Um, so I think it just, it felt right for us to start up and speak about something that is just so, I think culturally relevant to us in terms of football, just understanding the culture around the football here as well. And like, I even see sometimes a lot of times when people comment on the way that we speak, like, oh my God, why are these guys putting on accents? And as you know, it's just London, isn't it? London is a mix of so many different backgrounds and cultures and so many different things that is. So I think to go into something like basketball when I just don't have that much knowledge of it, I just don't think it'd be a fair reflection into like what the real basketball scene is. We've been asked though a couple of times, but no, nah, I don't think so. I think it'll stay within football. I'll just stay playing the other ones <laughs> every, behind, behind away from any cameras because I can't listen. I ain't the greatest, but I've got heart in it. So I'll just keep going. Hey, that's all you need, man. That's yeah. all you need. Who are like some of the people that y'all have worked with? Like some of like those big names. Yeah. I mean, like Manchester City team is like the main one. We've worked with a lot of different Manchester City players, both men and women's team, which was amazing, which was so sick. Um, then obviously you got like Hung Min Son from Tottenham. <sighs> Rivals, isn't it? But what a guy. Everything they say about Son and he's such a lovely guy and he was he was so amazing, man. And it was it's such a sick shoot and that one should be out soon. It's not even out yet. So I don't even think it'll, it's coming out in like December or something. So I don't know, it might be out when this is out, but 
down was sick. His footwork is off the charts. However sick people think pro footballers are, just seeing it up front like live is just completely different. But the biggest one being Vinicius Junior out of respect and he was just sick. Obviously speaking Portuguese, he's Brazilian, he speaks Portuguese. So it was, it was crazy. I'm not even gonna say the stuff that he was doing to me, pause. But like the stuff he was doing with the ball, it's like, but he was just, yeah, it was just, it was unreal, man. And, and the energy, Brazilians are just like that. They're like, they're the most, like, I swear to God, lovely people. They're just so lovely and nice, bro. So yeah, it was sick. So those are like the main key standout ones in terms of football players. What's the difference of like the Portuguese? Because you speak Angolan Portuguese and Portuguese Portuguese, and then you're speaking Brazilian Portuguese with Vinny. Like, how is that? No, so I speak like just more Portuguese, yeah. not so much Angolan Portuguese, that's more my mum. Um, obviously my mum from Angola, my dad from Portugal, he's from like up north in Portugal, my mum's from Bia, city in Angola, anyone from Bia, shout out anyone from Angola at all. But um, the Brazilian accent is the best one, I'll tell you from now, 100%. The Brazilian accent is the best accent in the world, across any language. And I don't even understand the other ones, I don't need to. The Brazilian accent, there's just something about it, man, it's just so sick. Like just the way they utilize their words, it's just, it's sick, man, honestly, it's, it's so cool. So, but yeah, you understand it. It's like the way I'd kind of put it, it's almost like an English person. If you've, have you ever heard an Irish person talk? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. They just talk a bit faster and stuff and obviously in their own way, but it's the same language, it's just certain different key words and yeah, the way they say the words. Man, that's crazy. I got to get to that, port that level. I'm, I'm going to learn Portuguese because yeah, it's a great. All I know is I know one word. I know vinte un. That's my age. That's it. Vinte un, and you know é um prazer now as well. Yeah, yeah, é um prazer. Now. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever Have you ever tried to like, or do you ever want to be in some of the one v one events that you do? Like one hundred percent. I've been planning it for a while in terms of me planning to play in an event because a lot of times people are like, "You're not a baller. You're not this, or you're commenting too much." And I'm like, "I'm a baller. I swear to God, I wouldn't be saying this. I wouldn't be saying it." But it's like. Yeah, no, we, we, I just haven't yet. I've been trying to find that balance in terms, you know, the host and being the referee and actually doing it. But I've said to my team, I've got like my own challenge that's going to be happening real soon, where it's essentially going to be like 60 days for a top baller host to compete in a top baller challenge. And like wherever that challenge is, I don't know, because, you know, like we just do events all over the world now. So it's like wherever that is, I don't know, but I'll compete in it 60 days from then. I've just got to find a schedule where I can actually, you know, train a bit more than what I'm doing now to actually compete in it. Because the last thing I'm going to do is go in there and just, if I get smoked, by all means, but that won't happen. I guarantee you that won't happen. But if I do, at least let me know that I was physically up to my best and I was at like, the best I could be. Because just to join in just for the sake of joining in is like... No, to know about that. That's all. dangerous. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm listen, I'm there to win. I'm not here to take part. Like, I'm I'm not the host. I'm not anybody. Put a, a random ref. He doesn't even need to know that I'm part of the top baller. Just, just let me play, let me do my thing. It'll be sick. Hopefully, listen, we'll revisit this. We'll revisit this in like three, four months' time. I'll, I'll do it within three, four months' time. Say less. Well, what if would you put your cousin and your brother in it? They don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want it. They don't want that smoke. They don't want, no, I'm joking. They would, be, they would be here right now, yeah, talking so much right now. But no, no, no. I don't know. If they want to do it, I can't talk for them. So I don't know if they would want to do it or not want to do it would be, I guess it's their choice to do it. But I don't know. I haven't heard anything from them saying that they, they would do it. So shook. Uh, nah, that's great. Oh, I cannot <laughs> wait. That's going to be insane. I got my money on you. So <laughs> my yeah. guy, bro, let's do it. What country in Africa has the best players? And this, this is from my friend Khalil who is Egyptian, so I already know what he's going to say. And we go back and forth about who's, who got the best countries or best players. I mean, listen, as much as I would, you know, want to back my Angola, the, I mean, the best current Angolan player right now of, like, Angolan heritage anyway, I know his mom or his dad's from Angola, is Kamavinga from Real Madrid. I don't know how many people. Obviously, he represents France, and it's his choice to represent whoever he wants. Um, there's a few others, but in terms of the biggest one that played for Portugal was... I forgot his damn time. I even forgot his name in it. So it's like he was a big player within like the Portuguese leagues, but he was never like no massive household name. So it's not Angola. I don't know, man. Like Ghana have produced some serious ballers. Nigeria have produced Ivory Coast. <sighs> Jogba was one of my favorites back in the day. The Torre brothers as well. Yeah. Like Kalu was doing his thing for Chelsea for years as well. It's, they produced some bad boy players, but. I'll tell you, I think the best African current player right now is you can't look past Salah in it. And he's got a shot to be one of the best African players, if not the best African player of all time. I think he'd probably be up there. But like, well, no, he'd definitely be up there with 
Obviously, there was George Weah. I was about to was say that, yeah. Killer as well. Got George Weah. I think Yaya Torre for me is just one of the best footballers I've ever seen play football. I just think he's one of the best midfielders that has ever been. Playing centre back for Barcelona in the Champions League final, winning that, and then going to Manchester City as a CDM and then saying, no, I want to be an attacking mid and turning over the numbers and assists that he did. I just think he's one of the best players that's ever lived. So. George Weah, I never watched as much, but from everything I've heard as well and stuff, I guess put him up there. But Yaya Torre and Salah for me are probably like the two best African players I think there's been. So currently right now, I don't know, it's tough. Who won the last AFCON again? Uh, oh, am I tripping? Man. I'm not even going to lie. I didn't even watch it because we didn't make it. I was Bro, I watched it. I watched the whole thing. I'm yeah, bugging. I don't, I don't know why I can't remember. I'll put it in. I'll, I'll figure it out sometime. But Who won the last World Cup? So I can remember putting it in. Who won the World, World Cup? Cup? Was it France <laughs> again? 22, it was Argentina. Argentina? Who won the last Euros? It wasn't England. England Euros got knocked out against Spain. Italy. Spain. Oh, oh, England, Italy was before. I'm forgetting yeah. all the winners. Or, are you talking about 21? In 21 was Italy. Yeah. And then the most recent one was Spain. Spain. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It was Spain. Now, I was just trying to line it up so yeah. that we could then get to the Afghan. Was it Algeria? I don't even know. Shit, we'll figure out. I don't even remember. But, so, okay, you got you to gotta pick a country, though. I think based on what I've seen in terms of just the amount of players they've chanted out, I'd have to go like Ivory Coast. I think growing up throughout high school and just now, it's, the amount of ballers they had was just ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, Ivory Coast. I totally agree because, oh, I, I mean, I don't know if I totally agree, but I really liked watching Drugba play like when I was younger. Like my first FIFA I really, really played was FIFA 12 on the Wii and he was killing it with Chelsea. Like I just remember seeing his name Drugba, Drugba, and he would just score. Like all I would do, like, like I traded him to Arsenal and then I'll, all I would do like him at Van Persie and uh, Drogba like I'll just do a rainbow boom kick it in the goal so yeah that's easy. crazy you know what? that's almost like me with NBA games are a bit different I played them like here and there every now like growing up obviously FIFA was always my game and then the GTA Call of Duty everyone plays but with the NBA games I would always because I wasn't well, no, I was broke growing up, so it's just like, if I'm going to choose to buy a game I'm going to buy a game I really want to play so what I'll do is just wait for like I don't know when I was like 16 or something you know you're working 15 16 i would always buy like the nba of like three years before when it was like 10 pounds or something and i remember buying it and there was this one guy called curry and i, I don't know what year this was so don't quote me and it was this one guy called curry and he, like i remember his stats were like really good for shooting or something and because i didn't know how to play at all i was just trying to shoot from everywhere and i remember being like ah this this guy curry is good man i don't know nothing about this guy but this guy is good and wow damn man like steph curry <laughs> On the map. He's the best shooter ever in basketball. Yeah, yeah. Has he got like, you guys must have the thing, the most three points ever. He, he's got that. He must yeah. have that. He surpassed that like two years ago and he's still playing. Oh shit, damn. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Because LeBron James is the highest scorer ever, right? Yeah. But Steph Curry is the most three points ever. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, that already makes you. It's like in football, long shots. Like who's got the most goals outside the box and whatnot. But yeah, no, nah, that's crazy, man. That's sick. Yeah. Nah. It's always so fascinating hearing stories about like how you like, you know, you, you discover a player, discover a team, especially from a different country. That's what I love hearing. Like, that's so crazy. Like, like just hearing about like, some random guy named Curry. And then all of a sudden, he's the greatest shooter of all time. <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. Bro, it's not real. Yeah. And you just see LeBron, like, walking down the street, basically. Bro, in the store, bro, it was, honestly, it was, it was crazy. I wish my brother was here right now, because he'd be telling you the same thing. Like, he'd be, bro, it was, it was crazy. Bro, it was the same experience. Who do you think is the best football player of all time? He says Mbappe, but he doesn't really know ball, so. Damn. Um... <laughs> Oh, it's so tough, man. Like, again, shout out to all the old legends from Pelé to Uzebu, Maradona, all of that. I never watched none of these guys play. And one thing is, for facts, they wasn't pulling up the numbers that these two men are doing right now, which is Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. People might say Pelé was, but again, he was doing it in the American League and the Brazilian League, so I don't think that's quite the same. I think, personally, from what I saw, and I saw a little bit more, I saw a little bit of him, which was R9, Brazilian Ronaldo, um, but so I think he's the only guy for me that I'd ever put on the same level as Cristiano Ronaldo and, and Lionel Messi. And besides the three of them, I'd choose Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi as the top two. And it's tough, man. You know, being Portuguese, part of me wants to say Ronaldo so bad, but another part of me is like Messi. I just think, and whenever I see their fans going at it, like he is so much further than this guy. He's so much clearer of that guy. It's like you're lying to yourself. Whoever is better, isn't better by that much of a distance. It's like me saying to you right now, who's better, Messi or Saka? 
everyone knows by a distance is Saka now I'm playing. Everyone knows by a distance is Messi, innit? So it's like, that's not even a debate. But I hate when people try to bring that same argument to Ronaldo and Messi. Like when somebody says it's Ronaldo over Messi and they're like, it's not even a debate. It's like, how is not you? It's not even a debate. But I don't know. I guess I would put it down like this. I think Messi is like top two best goal scorers of all time. And he's the best assister of all time. Ronaldo for me is the best goal scorer of all time. And he's considerably lower than Messi in terms of being the best assister, which are the two most important things of football. Fuck, I'm talking too much because I don't even want to answer. I don't want, I don't want this to be clipped right now. <laughs> um, it's a tough one, man. If I wanted one player in any team, in any style, in any weather to win me a game, I'd say Ronaldo. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Couldn't agree more. I'm trying to get my, my cousin, because he's like a big Messi fan, I'm trying to switch him to the Ronaldo side because... I mean, I like those type of guys that just have that like, that like that it factor, and I just like how every time how Ronaldo was on like, I've been watching a lot of videos like him versus like Atletico Madrid, and like, it kind of it kind of like reminds me of how LeBron was against like the Boston Celtics in terms of like, like when they were playing the Champions League or they play in the in the playoffs every year, like no matter what the other team would do, they would still prevail. LeBron would prevail and Ronaldo would prevail, and they were just they would always get it done, and those are the. Those are the type of players I always like. Like, no matter what the circumstance, they just get it done. Even if their player, their team isn't that good, they just get it done. It's always the Boston Celtics. And I only say this, is it? Because I remember seeing the Jordan documentary. I forgot what it was called. The, the Last Jordan, Dance. The Last Dance, that's it. Was it Boston Celtics as well that you just used to beat up teams as well when they were playing? It was uh, Detroit Pistons. Detroit Pistons. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. So, no, I guess it wasn't Boston Celtics. But yeah. yeah. But it was the same. Boston Celtics, like, in earlier in LeBron's career, it's like, LeBron. they used to handle LeBron. And then when he went to Miami, that's when he started beating them and he went back to Cleveland started beating them and he's that's why LeBron is like the owner of like 30 franchises right now basically so killing it bro what a guy listen nothing but big up to him man he just kills it innit and I think 39 isn't he him 40. or Ronaldo 40 him or yeah. Ronaldo are similar 39 40 still at the top of their game yeah. I mean credit to LeBron he's still technically in the NBA and Ronaldo's in Saudi but both still professionals within their own right and both still making history yeah that's great who do you think is the GOAT in the NBA it's a tough one. Do you know this one? Do you know what? this one's not that tough because for football, as you can see, football is my sport in it. So it 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 hurts me. Whoever I say, I think immediately I'll just say LeBron. He's the guy who got me into basketball, I guess. So it's like there's the whole Michael Jordan and that documentary like inspired me, even with top baller, with my own personal life, to so many different ways. And I guess I can see just from that angle why people would say it's him. But I guess for me personally, I don't know. I got involved in basketball because of him. The fact that you just further told me because I thought you was the highest point scorer you just confirmed it now I guess it speaks for itself innit totally yeah. agree to be that consistent and that like on the top of the league for that long no one has done it and ever. that's you know I think that's an argument because I think LeBron is in that Messi Ronaldo or Messi Ronaldo or in the LeBron same thingy where they've done it for so long they've done it for like 20 years and the argument for someone like the Brazilian Ronaldo is but he got knee injury but he got this but he got that which is so unfortunate for sure but I think if you look at the way Ronaldo and Messi approach football, it's like they treat it with the most highest level of dedication ever, where they do everything to maintain their top level physique. Whereas someone like the Brazilian Ronaldo, they won't like that, bro. You know, them Brazilians love to party and I love it. I'm so with them. I'm with them all, trust me. But it's like, how can you then blame another man when you got injured? And I'm not saying that was a result because he went out drinking, but there's no doubt. It's like, do you get me? Drinking is like the worst thing you can do when you're an athlete. And as far as I'm aware, Messi, Ronaldo don't drink. I don't know if LeBron does. I wouldn't be surprised if he probably doesn't either. And if he does, probably the most minimal amount. So it's fair, man. If you're, if you're going for that long, come on, man. Put some respect on their name. Yeah. Uh, Randy, you know ball. But yeah, that's all I had. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Telog. Telog, man. For you, un plaisir. See. Si. Plaisir, bro. Come on, bro. I'm excited to get this out, man.